Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Boring Land. Oh, Come just on. kidding. Blasphemer. Oh, Hello, my. Boring Review Nation. Kind of pointless. We know all things. All right. Welcome back to Boring Reviews. Nick here. Jody there. And we are here, willing and able, and excited to check out another. Trevor Noah! My sync was way off on that one. I kept like, and I was way off. Trevor Noah, baby! We yeah. found out in the comment section of our last video that he is going to be done in December. If you have not seen our reaction to that video about him calling it quits, go ahead and check it out. We would appreciate it. So today we're looking at a video that was from just a few months ago. No, it's no, crazy how two years ago. A few months ago and two years. She didn't let me finish. I wasn't going to say that. <laughs> so not a few months. They say it's crazy how fast his hair's growing in a few months. That's nuts. He's got like a miracle grow or some nonsense. But um, no, this is from a few years ago. And what video are we checking out today? A look back at the legacy of Stop and Frisk in New York City. Oh, okay. Okay. So in all honesty, I, I chose this video because there was a lot of uh, people that checked it out. And we liked the between the scenes. We liked Trevor Noah. This is a more of a serious topic, but it seems like our audience really likes some more serious topics too. Even though we're not very political ourselves, it is still fun to have conversations about it. So I did a little bit of research this time. Okay. So basically the stop and frisk policy in New York is something that's allowed state of New York. It has for a very, very long time. They cops stop you. Yeah. And, and well, you know, they, they, if, they, if they think you're a person well, of interest, yes. right? Yes. They can stop. They can, re they can search all that kind of stuff. It's okay. been accepted. But the problem is through the years, through the, especially in the 2000s, the, the percentage of those being, you know, black Americans, mm, right? Have increased. Um, or even minorities for that matter, non-Caucasians for that matter. Could you imagine after 9 -11, Way higher. Anybody of like any Middle Eastern descent after 9-11, right. that would have been a huge Exactly. Mm -hmm. So it, it, it's just, it's not an even keel thing. And so you can understand how it causes a problem. Yep. So I think he's going to be talking about that. Well, all I could find online is in 2019, there was a, there was a, a, what's, a suit that was filed against it because of a uh, wrongful stop and frisk and all that kind of stuff. Mm. And then it got to the point where like, it was like in the presidential debates in 20, I saw at one point, I think it was Trump eventually backed down from supporting that at some point as it caused more waves. So Gotcha. Let us know if you know more about this because I couldn't find that if it's like completely abolished in New York, New York, or it's still a practice that's going on, and the politicians are are using it as their campaign to say whether they feel this or that way about it. Um, please be kind in the comment section if you like this video reaction. Please don't forget to like, subscribe, and hit that notification bell so you're aware of our next uploaded videos. Ding ding, as Apollo Creed would say. How dare you not know that reference every time I say it? I do. Rocky. Not you. Oh. The audience. So I'm going to go ahead and make our... We don't need subtitles, but I've gotten so used to them with Trevor Noah. I'm going to make them a little bit bigger for us. You guys don't need to know that. So then we know what's happening before he says it, Nikolai. I'm just... I'm so used to it. What can uh, I say? Here we... Cut you off there. Shmo. You know, the, the biggest issue, I think... I have and many other people have with Mike Bloomberg and how he's defending his stop and frisk record is that he doesn't seem to know what he's defending. And that, that Bloomberg was the other one that eventually you know, backed he down. Goes, mm -hmm. Oh, I, I apologize for the policy. And people are not are not as angry about the policy, I think, as Can how the know. policy was targeted. Because for so many years, especially in America, black people have said, hey, the police are targeting us just because we're black. They treat us like we're all criminals. They're not just trying to go for criminals. And what would people say to people? Oh, you overreacted. Cops are not just going to throw you against the wall. You must have done something. You and I can imagine for a long time, for many black Americans, it must have felt like being gaslit. You know what's happening to you. You say what's happening to you. And people are like, that's crazy. And I can imagine how for many white people in America, they're like, that is crazy. You just got thrown against the wall? Why? You must have been doing something. Because white people are like, I've never been thrown against the wall. That, that would never happen to me. What, what? You just got thrown against the wall? That's it? I see cops all the time. I say, hello, officer. They say, hello, sir. And then I keep walking. <laughs> you just got thrown against the wall? That doesn't make any sense. And, I can and then a lot of black people were like, you white people are being racist because you don't. And white people are like, that is insane. Cops will not just throw. And I can see how people have lived in these worlds for so long. And then now you have audio of Mike Bloomberg saying, and that audio for me, if you break it down into pieces, 
has so many issues with it. First of all, the fact that he says, if you look at criminals and, 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 and victims of crime, et cetera, you can Xerox. You can just copy and paste it and put it out there. It shows me that you didn't even care about the differences between black people. You made it seem like black is crime when in fact black is most affected by crime. That is the thing that you did there, right? That's the first problem I have. Secondly, the fact that people don't seem to realize the ramifications of treating people like that. Imagine if you are a black kid living in Mike Bloomberg's New York City. Every day, you're getting frisked and thrown against the wall, huh? put over the hood of a car every day. This is what cops are just, this is your life. Now imagine if you are a black kid who lives in this world. A cop gets you, pulls you, throws you into all. You got something, you, no, you carry, next day it happens again. Maybe next week, maybe next month, whenever it is. At some point, what do you say? Fuck the police, mm -hmm. yeah? And then you get people like, why don't you respect the police? Why don't they respect me? They don't protect and serve me. These people come and throw me against the wall and treat me like a criminal. You know what I mean? And then what does that kid do one day? They see the cops, they go, screw this. I'm not staying around for this. They run away. The cops pursue. Now they catch you. What are you? You're, you're evading arrest. You're resisting arrest. Now you get arrested for resisting arrest. Hmm. Then you go to jail. You can't afford bail. Now you're in prison. What does prison turn you into more likely than not? A criminal. Right? And even if you don't become a criminal because of that, you are still in the system now. We've seen how these kids get locked up. They can't afford to come out. Now they are yeah. living a life of crime without being a criminal. And then you're just like, oh, but these kids spend all their time in jail. How did they get to jail? Why were you running from the cops? Because I was tired of being thrown against the motherfucking wall. <laughs> I'm not going to stick around for that. I remember that in high school. I didn't wait. The bully came and I was like, oh, shit. And I was gone. <laughs> I wasn't going to stand there and be like, yeah, well, well good afternoon, bully. Uh, nice to see you again. A uh, different thing today, yes? Are we going to talk this out? No, at some point you knew the bully was going to do what he's going to do, so you ran before they even got to you. And then people are like, why are these kids running away? They don't respect the police, but do the police respect them? And that is something no one can deny. If you've ever been in a rich neighborhood specifically, not just a white neighborhood, but a rich neighborhood, you will see the relationship that police have with those communities. It's very different because they know if they throw the wrong person, search the wrong person, frisk the wrong person, that person knows someone powerful enough to make sure that mm -hmm. their job is in danger. Mm -hmm. And those are the dynamics that you're dealing with here. And so my problem with Mike Bloomberg is he's not saying, I'm sorry for targeting black people. I'm sorry for treating black people like second class citizens. I'm sorry for gaslighting black people for so long. No, he's just like, I'm sorry that stop and, stop and frisk happened to affect black communities. And it's like, no, it didn't happen to. You designed it to. That was good, that was powerful. Very powerful. That was powerful because when, she, I, I like though how he says at the very beginning that White people don't think that. They think like, you know, well, what are you doing to get thrown, away, thrown against the wall? Because it doesn't happen to us. And, it, and the reason I like that he kind of pointed that out is he's not blaming white people. He's saying that that's no. not our reality. And he's right. Like, that's... He's even getting on a level of someone else, which is very hard to do. To understand someone else's perspective is very, very difficult. Yes. He's recognizing that from... And not that all white people are the same. I, I hate no, that, right? No, it's very generalized. But I've never been stopped and frisked. You've never no. been stopped and frisked. We've never been thrown against the wall by walking down the street or whatever. Exactly. We, for the most part, I have thought that many times. Like, well, if you're in jail, you probably did something wrong or you were at the wrong place or mm -hmm. you, wrong time or whatever. And so, not to cut you off, but I do like how he also, he tells you that like, he understands both sides. That's yes. That's not what's happening. And I like that the way he talked about it, it automatically, you don't want to just like jump in and be like, you did something wrong. You're like, oh, wait, there must be more to this. And, you know, we've had a friend that's gone through things like this that made it much more, maybe not this exactly, but right. it had that racism where it's made it Profiling. much more um, understandable. Because I was like, wait, what? That, that still happens? And when it came to a close friend of ours, I was like, oh, and it does open your mind to realize that this happens more than we realize. If you're not the one being profiled, you don't think it, it may be happening. But he makes good sense. Like, yeah, these kids are going to start running away. And then they're going to be in a life of in and out of jail. Because why would you keep putting yourself in a situation where you're being disrespected or hurted for not doing anything wrong? It makes me think of the movie Shawshank Redemption. For anyone that's seen that beautiful classic film, Andy Dufresne, the main character, he gets put in jail because he's wrongfully accused and wrongfully convicted. He didn't do the, the murder that they said he did. And so he's in there for 20 years and he's doing these criminal acts while he's in there. Not Nothing like murder or anything, but he's doing illegal acts, partly so that the warden can make lots of money. But then he tells his friend Red, Morgan Freeman, he says, 
Before I came to jail, I was, you know, law-abiding. I was clean as a whistle. I had to come to jail to learn how to be a criminal. And you watch, I watch document, not documentaries, but like those series about like locked up and mm -hmm. all this kind of stuff where you hear story after con, after con, after con, a convict that is in jail talking about how I first got arrested at 18. I've been in and out like it's a job for the last 30 years. And I, and I get out and I have plans to, to stay clean, but then something else happens or this or that. And I'm always back in here. And at some point they say, forget it. What is even the point of being law-abiding citizen? There's, I'm going to throw them back in jail anyways. And it's a cycle, which is the problem that is, is never going to get better, right? If you're continually getting kicked down and kicked down and kicked down and you don't get a chance to even play the game, so to speak, it's, it's, it's unfair. And my eyes have been open. You know, I grew up here in, in the western part of the United States, in California, and now we're here in you know, Nevada. It's a different type of dynamic, racial dynamic, I will mm -hmm. say, between white and black people specifically. It, it's not like what, if you're not from the States, if you're watching this from somewhere else, it's not like what like what he's talking about or what you see on TV or like the South or whatever, where yeah. ra racism is still very prevalent, right? It's, it's a lot more low key. So me growing up, I never even saw racism for the most part. You know, there was bullies and there was people that were just mean, but it had nothing to do with race. And so you have that part of perspective too. Some people, they grow up with the racism and they know what to expect and they're not naive to it or whatever. So whatever the perspective is, as I get older, I start to notice these things. And it is, it is, it's pathetic. It's sad that you're driving down the street in whatever car or vehicle and you get pulled over. Why am I being pulled over? I don't hate cops, right? I don't hate the cops, but I don't have that kind of negative, you know, situation or experience with police officers, Right. And so I really like what he's trying to say. I'm rambling here, but what I'm trying to say is I really, I agree with what he's saying mm -hmm. and I understand what he's saying. And it's, it's a situation where he's absolutely right. Like it needs to stop. Is, was there a reason to stop and frisk this person who happens to be black as opposed to this person that's with him that's white? Why do you go to this? Why is the racially profiling or like what you were talking about, different races around 9-11 or whatever, or minorities? It's uh, we, we've got to stop pretending. And I feel like the country has gone ways, right? We've got to stop pretending that it does not exist. That it's not a possible. Doesn't mean yeah. every police officer is evil and a racist and this or that. But we've got to stop pretending like it doesn't exist. And we've got to figure out how to system systematically eliminate it. Right. No yeah. one's ever going to be perfect. You're always going to have your judgments and this and that. But eliminate at least the, the, the profiling. Right. Can we at least eliminate that kind of stuff? And I know I sound like I'm preaching right now, but. Well, the profiling. His words really inspired me. Should be less on appearance and more on actions. Are they acting shady or you know what I mean? Like, is there, is there any cause? That's yes. the thing. Is there any cause? Are they doing something that makes you feel like you need to frisk them? Like, yeah. Because, and honestly, nowadays with so many rights to carry on guns and stuff, like, I'd be nervous to, like, you don't know, you know, does that make yeah. sense? No, like, I mean, if people are going to try to, did you ask me if I had a, a, a yeah. carry on permit? Exactly. Because that's why I have my gun right exactly. here. Not that I have one, I have no, no, gun. <laughs> no gun, but yes, but, but like you, there's so many different things too that I think involve it, but yeah, I think it should be on yeah. behavior. Is, is there a reason that you're frisking them beyond what you feel? Your, your profile. Well, you, you've got to have that. And it can't be because of the color of their skin. Yeah. Last thing I want to say is this perspective is so important. Whether you're, you're American or any other person, any other country that you're from, right? Any other citizen from any other country. It's if you understand the person you have conflict with their perspective, it makes things so much better. Mm -hmm. It makes things so much easier to deal with because at the end of the day, right, we can sit there and be like, oh, well, you, you probably shouldn't have got arrested. That's your fault. But if it was your own kid that got arrested, yeah. right? How many times, even if you know your kid did something wrong, are you going to try to fix that for them? Yep. Are you going to try to downplay it? Are you going to get a lawyer and try to find any way to get out of that? Because now it's close to home and now mm -hmm. you care about it. And now you're like, oh, wait, this is messed up. This is what some people in this country have been dealing with for a very, very long time. Yeah. Um, just because of the color of their skin, because where they, where they come from, because of the neighborhood they're from or 
who they're hanging out or whatever. Sometimes it's just the clothes they're wearing too. Clothes they're wearing. People profile all the time based off of what your clothes you're wearing. But I love that you said that because if we were just to put ourselves in those people's shoes, those people's shoes, we'd be much more compassionate and understanding. Understanding when exactly. it hits home is when things change. And it, and unfortunately, like you said, they're nice to certain people because those people know powerful people. But if we all had just put ourselves in that situation and be like, well, I wouldn't want this to happen to me or to my kids, then I think it would change a lot. But a lot of people say, well, if it doesn't affect me, it's not that big of a deal. Exactly. It doesn't affect Not me. a perfect world <clears throat> by any means, but appreciate this. Let us know what you think about this more of a serious topic here. Not really a lot of comedy, even though he was still able to throw his comedy in there, which he's really good at. Don't forget to like and subscribe. And until next time. Goodbye.